Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Callie, aka Callie's Jams, and I think we should do another music drama episode because last night was eventful to say the least. Um, it was Super Bowl night, so I have a lot to talk about with the music side of the Super Bowl. Um, and because I'm trying to do more music drama stuff and more album reactions and more synopsis type of stuff as 2024 keeps going, I figured, you know what, I feel like this is a good, like, kind of push from talking about Megan Thee Stallion and Nikki. And so now this is kind of more of a, I would guess, I guess maybe like a lighter topic in some sense because it's more universal versus talking about two people back to back. So, yeah, we're talking about the Super Bowl. If any of you think that I'm going to be talking about the game, uh, you are very mistaken. I will not be discussing the game any way, shape, or form. I will only be talking about the music. Um, I don't know if you paid attention to the title, but I'm literally talking about the Super Bowl halftime performance, as well as the openers for the Super Bowl, and also some other music artists that have been on the rise because of the Super Bowl promo and all the commercials that happened um, last night, and I just, I just want to talk about it, okay? Like, (laughs) let's get started. I have a lot to talk about, um, as far as goes with how I felt about the Super Bowl halftime performance, as well as, um, what artists were there, and, um, what I think is going to happen as 2024 keeps going with the music industry, um, just some general opinions. So, I am going to say this very explicitly. I am saying this based on opinion only, and then I'll be backing up uh, about who was there at the game and the artists that performed based on articles, and I will link them in the description, obviously, to give them credit. Um, But yeah, generally speaking, this is all opinions um, only because I just feel like Um, a lot of you people are just going to kind of come at me whenever I say all this stuff. Um, so I don't know. I just wanted to make that clear. So I feel like we just need to cut to the chase. We need to talk about the halftime performance first. Um, because in my opinion, um, I feel like that was a very lackluster performance. Not saying this because I don't like Usher. I think Usher is a very successful person. But personally with me, although he was making music in my generation and maybe a little older, um, I just I just always thought he was a forgetful artist in my opinion. Um, I always thought that like his music was kind of the same as every other R&B artist, I'll be very honest with you. Um, so when they asked when the NFL asked Usher to perform for the Super Bowl, I was like, uh, okay, weird choice. Like, I, I literally said that is a very weird choice to pick because you have plenty of other artists that have written hundreds and hundreds of records, and they're like, no, we're going to pick Usher. So it just, it was a little strange to me. So whenever I heard the first thing about Usher performing, I was very hesitant. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. Um, but I am going to say with every other Super Bowl halftime performance, most of the time they are very lackluster. I know that is, that is going to offend so many of you people, but like, I just always thought that the halftime performances are so like, how do I put this? It is staged. It is over the top. There's a lot of theatrics happening. But to me, it just doesn't feel real. It feels like the Truman Show, honestly. It feels like everything has to be popping. Everything has to happen at once. And it's just like, it doesn't always have to be powerhouse stuff. It could be something that's a little more real. Uh, It talks about more issues or something that is authentic to the artist. Um, Personally, I think, in my opinion, the best Super Super Bowl halftime performances, I think Lady Gaga was amazing. I think her stage presence and her choices of the songs were perfect, even though it was most of her popular ones. She has been such an icon in the music industry that I feel like picking her was like the perfect choice. Um, same thing with Beyonce. I thought Beyonce's was incredible. 
um, also with the collaboration of Beyonce and Bruno Mars, but I will say I personally believe that Coldplay got super robbed during that performance. Like, as an avid Coldplay fan, I've listened to them since I was seven years old. Um, they were not meant for the Super Bowl. I'm just going to say it. Because they were completely robbed. Like, they only had time for, like, two songs. And then it was Bruno and Beyonce. And then Chris Martin was like, hey, guys, I'm here, too. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Basically, the point I'm trying to make is that I do not think that every Super Bowl halftime performance is good. I always am very skeptical. I don't know how to feel about it. So anyway, yeah, Usher. Um, it was, as I've said, very lackluster uh, and very forgetful, I think, because I don't know. It just felt like there was no value to it. It just felt like he was just there to perform, and that's it. Um and I don't necessarily see the problem with that. I'm just taking it at face value. But um, I'd like to show you all this article that I found um, from Slate. Uh, let's see what we got here. So the Italian, the Italian-born crooner, the Italian. I can't read. Okay, the, the Atlanta-born crooner promised Vogue that R&B would take the main stage, and it was given that at the very least he would bring out the collab, his collaborators on his most popular hit, Yeah, which is Little John and Ludacris, which did happen. But that didn't stop fans from speculating about his other yet-to-be-revealed guests. Would they include the Grammy's most recent artist, Victoria Monet? Would Usher give Janet Jackson a moment of redemption? Or maybe considering the fact that Taylor Swift would be in attendance to support her beau, uh, Kansas City Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey? Would the country pop princess hop on the stage for a genre crossover? But the potential guest that had everyone hopeful was Usher's protege, Justin Bieber, who Usher famously ushered from YouTube virally to pop stardom. In fact, TMZ even reported that the two were in talks for a special tag team moment during the big game. That never happened. Um, that was one of the first things that I noticed was the fact that Justin Bieber was not there. And a part of me is like, okay, that's fine. But then the other part of me is like, why? Because I grew up watching Usher and Justin Bieber when Justin Bieber was like in his baby era. And I just feel like that would have been such a cool nostalgia performance to me if Usher grabbed Justin Bieber. But I feel like Justin just didn't want to associate with that specific time period anymore, which is perfectly understandable because if you really look at it from hindsight, Justin Bieber was a kid. He was a boy. And there was just been a lot of things in the music industry that has always been controversial and the treatment of the artist too under the contract. I mean, for fuck's sake, he was under Scooter's, you know, wing. So that's a whole other thing that we could probably discuss for another episode. But yeah, um, that was one of the first things I noticed. And then I feel like Usher's stage presence was very off-putting. Like, it kind of started really funny. Like, he was just sitting on the stage, and usually a lot of the times when artists come up, they either rise from a platform or they jump down from a very high building, like Lady Gaga did. Um, or they just kind of come out of nowhere, like The Weeknd or Beyonce. Um, so I just didn't expect Usher to just be like, Hi, I'm sitting here. Like, it's it's kind of weird. I don't know. Um, and honestly, because I don't know Usher that much with his music, I, d I have listened to his music in the past. It's just stuff that sounds exactly the same. Like, I'll just be so honest. Um, but I did like the representation of the black culture. I thought that was very interesting, um, because he brought out a variety of guests. He brought, um, let's see, what did I put? Uh, he brought out Jermaine Dupri. He brought Will I Am. Uh, he brought Her, which... Oh my God, we will get to her in a minute. Uh, Alicia Keys, Little John, and Ludacris. So let's break that down. So I didn't notice Jermaine Dupri. Honestly, I, I don't really know who he is. I'm sorry. Educate me if you guys wish. Um, will I am. I expected him to be there because, oh my God, was performed. Um, Alicia Keys, I that one I didn't expect. Um, but it was also kind of prepared because it's like she's under that same era as Usher was. So there you have it. And then Little John and Ludacris. Now this is where I, I knew they were going to come on stage because Yeah is like still a huge, huge song. Um, but as I've stated in the beginning, it's just so lackluster. 
like he had a marching band he had um a ton of like pole dancers he had a uh, rollerblading he had a lot of dancing going on uh he had a lot of like visual arts and stuff like that but it still felt va- like it still felt valueless to me like it, it just didn't seem authentic it just seemed like oh i'm just here i'm just here for participation like there's there was no emphasis on it and also i'll be very honest usher kind of gives me the ick <laughs> Like, the way he was dancing, and he was like, I'm going to take my shirt off. It's like, calm down. Let's go to the set list that Usher did so we can kind of, like, talk about that. Because I don't want to talk just about Usher. I want to see, like, why he picked certain um, songs. So he started off with My Way, and then he did Caught Up, which that was expected. You Don't Have to Call, uh, the snippet of Superstar. He also did Love in This Club. And then he also did, did If I Ain't Got You with My Boo, which was with Alicia Keys. And then he did Confessions with Jermaine Dupri. And then he did Nice and Slow. He did Burn, You Got It Bad with her. Now, people, 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 people. This was the part that I liked in the performance. Because she looked so good. Like, are you kidding me? She looked so good. I was so impressed. Like, ugh. And I saw her, um, first of all, I didn't know that was her for a second. And then I looked at her closer and I was like, oh my God, that's her. Um, and the reason why I got so excited was because she opened for Coldplay when I went to see them and she killed it. She is an excellent artist and an excellent performer. So the fact that Usher invited her to come and play guitar, I was like, bro, that's sick. Um, and I'll be very real. That was the only part I liked. <laughs> and then uh, her did the intro for bad girl and then this is when um the rollerblade stuff happened um and the thing that I was kind of excited about that because it was like oh that's kind of interesting like they're rollerblading and they're kind of like dancing and kind of it was very smooth and I I kind of enjoyed that and then he did oh my god and it only lasted like five seconds like that's another thing I didn't like about this performance it was like he did like one minute of a song and then boom he went to the next one now I get I understand to a point that you only have like 13 15 minutes I think that's how long you perform at a Super Bowl but if you're gonna do that you have to time it right and I feel like the timing just wasn't good it was very like okay we're gonna do five seconds of uh nice and slow and then we're gonna go to like oh my god and it's just like huh like people want to enjoy the show they want to like like when people go to concerts and when people like listen to artists they want to hear the whole thing from back to back it's just a fucking obvious thing to do (laughs) okay um like can he at least do like one song the entire way through or he could cut out a verse and that would be fine like whatever but that didn't happen it was like all right here's one minute of oh my god or it really lasted five seconds and then it went to like turn down for what which was a lot longer than usher deserved i'll be honest um and then after turn down for what it was yeah which i knew was going to be the closer because everybody loves that song and i don't think there was anything wrong with that but as i said it's just usher just has this weird vibe about him that i just don't like and it's just I don't know. It's so strange to me. I just don't like it. That's just my opinion. Um, But I did like the colors. I liked the visuals a lot um, at the end. But guys, what was that outfit that he was wearing? Like he looked like, I I said this in my group chat with all my girlfriends. Like we were all talking about the Super Bowl performance, like as he was performing. And I literally said, he looks like a discounted Optimus Prime like what was that outfit that was like one of the weirdest outfits i've ever seen and the thing that was so funny was like he would just like change and then he would just like stop and then he would like not really sing that much and then he would change again he would go in his rollerblades and then he was just like going back and forth for like five seconds and then he took them off it's like what is the point that you're trying to prove like it's weird (laughs) it's really really weird i just didn't 
I I just didn't like it. End of story. Um, but yeah, that was my opinion on the halftime performance. Um, I just personally believe that he could have performed a lot better. His vocals were fine. It's just he should have timed it better. He should have had a more authentic visual. And I think the song choices were kind of shitty. I think he could have had a better thing. And for fuck's sake, get Justin Bieber. Justice for Justin Bieber, people. Like, <laughs> anyways. Um, so, yeah, that was my opinion on it. And, uh, yeah. But if you guys disagree, that's fine. Opinions are opinions. And I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> Before the Super Bowl halftime performance, I noticed some good things right away. First of all, Post Malone. Oh my god, I love Post Malone, people. I do. Um, he killed it with America the Beautiful. Um, I loved his performance a lot. It was it was very valuable. It had authenticity. Um, and he just looked so happy to be there. Like, I was just so happy for him. Um, and I, I always loved his voice. I thought his voice is, like, so smooth and so beautiful. So I really liked his performance of America the Beautiful. And then we had uh, Reba with um, the National Anthem, which, oh my god, that that was like one of the most American Pie performances I've ever seen. And then we had Andre Day. I feel like people really slept on that performance because it just was kind of unexpected, but it was the Black National Anthem. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was very beautiful. Um, her vocalists, her background vocalists, are you kidding me? That was like one of the most well-blended performances I've ever heard. It was so pretty. I was like having chills when I listened to that. I was like just having goosebumps. It was so good. Um, but everybody slept on it. And that just made me very like upset because it's like, I know that you're here to see a football game and there's nothing wrong with that. But a part of me is like, these people came out to perform for this these two teams that were playing against each other. It's a national American event. And the fact that you guys are just like, it's like, why don't you like take everything in and like enjoy the moment and like see what was really happening around you. Um, but that's just my opinion. And if people were at the game and they liked it, good for you. I don't care. But like, <laughs> I just felt like people slept on that performance and it was incredible. But yeah, I would say, I think my favorite performance out of that entire Super Bowl was Post Malone's opening of America the Beautiful. That was gorgeous. Um, but yeah, we need to talk about who was at the game because so many icons and so many cool musicians were there. So let's break it down. So obviously, let's just cut to the chase. Taylor Swift was there as expected. She was with Ice Spice, uh, Blake Lively, and the Queen Lana Del Rey. Um, I was so happy that Lana went to the game. I didn't think she would go. And the fact that she went with her sister and then she hung out with Taylor for the rest of the game, that was kind of sick in my opinion. Um, and before any of you say all the opinions about Taylor and Travis, look, I don't think Taylor did anything wrong. <laughs> she didn't. I do like Taylor a lot. I think she's a fantastic artist and she has been a pinnacle of my life. Like, without Taylor, I wouldn't be picking up a guitar and making music. I wouldn't be writing songs. I wouldn't be writing poetry. Like, she has been the origin story for me. And I highly respect her for that. But, <clears throat> I will say on the other side of the coin, I do agree that we're not here to see Taylor Swift. We are here to watch a football game. And the fact that it was just back to back to back to back with Taylor, it was just like, no, we're here to watch a football game. Like, same thing with Lana. Like, if Lana was at the status of Taylor Swift and Lana was showing on the screen over and over and over, I would still be pissed. And I have loved Lana since I was 12 years old. Like, she is literally mother. Love her to death. She's my favorite artist of all time. But the purpose of it is you're here to watch a football game. You're not here to like glamorize all of these celebrities. You can show them from time to time. That's fine. It's just, I I didn't like the fact that like, it was just Taylor, 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 Taylor. It's like, girl, chill out. Like, that's why people don't really watch the NFL. That's why people don't like the chiefs. 
And I know it's not her fault, and I know it's not literally directly at her. She, I don't think she did anything wrong. It's just the PR team of the NFL and Taylor's team, I personally believe, have been just rubbing it in our faces. So when people say, are like, oh, Taylor, it's all, it's all Taylor's fault. It's like, no, you need to blame the team that's behind it. Blame the people behind the scenes, not Travis and Taylor. That's my opinion on it. Um, so I'm hoping that when the NFL keeps going, and if she's still with Travis, um, I really hope that they don't do as much because that will literally decrease the amount of NFL watchers, and they're going to lose a ton of money. But yet again, the NFL is literally like billions and billions of dollars, so they might not care. And that will just decrease my chances of watching the game personally. Um, that's just one of the reasons why I probably won't watch football this season, uh, this coming season. But um, that's just my opinion, and I hope you all respect that. And if not, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Taylor was there, obviously, so we'll cut to the chase, chase there. So was Ice Spice and Lana. Um, Jay-Z and Beyonce were there, which we will get to Beyonce in a second. Um, we also had um, Queen Latifah, which she was an actress. I don't know why I said that. Uh, we also had Marin Morris. Um, she was there. Justin and Haley were also there, um, which I knew he would because even though that him and Usher talked about performing together, he probably just went to watch to support whatever team he rooted for and for Usher, so that was expected to me. Uh, Luke Combs was there, and then Lana Del Rey. <laughs> she looked so good, people. Like, oh my god. I I bet you any money. Like, she's a 49ers fan, uh, and the fact that, like, she was sitting next to Taylor. It's like, I was, it was like literally watching yin and yang and the sun and moon, like talk to each other. It was really wholesome to me. Um, Lady Gaga, Miss Gaga was there. Period. I also loved her story. I thought it was one of the most funniest things I've ever seen. Um, but I just, I just love Gaga. She's great. <laughs> She's a great artist. We had all these artists, right? And all of a sudden, like, I think it was like during the third quarter, or no, it was the second quarter. Um, Beyonce decided to be very sneaky and release a commercial with Verizon. And I was like, oh, that's just, you know, that's just Beyonce being Beyonce because she's iconic. Like, whatever. Then she said, boom, Renaissance Part 2. Boom. Two songs coming out. And I was like, oh, my God. I can't. I can't handle myself right now. <laughs> I was so excited. I think that was the highlight of my night with the Super Bowl, honestly, was Beyonce. Um, I have become a Beyonce fan, people. Like, I grew up listening to Beyonce, and I wish I listened to her more throughout my life. But I'm now here, and I have an opportunity to fully listen to her more. And the fact that she's releasing a new album in March, that's crazy. So... At some point this week, I'll listen to her two new songs that she released. It's very country, and I'm very excited to, like, check it out because Beyonce's never done country. Um, and same thing with Lana. I feel like everybody's converting to country, let's be honest. Country, I should say. <laughs> but, yeah, she's releasing two songs. Um, she already dropped the music um, in the final seconds of the Verizon commercial, which I didn't notice that. I should have. Um... But yeah, she released a song called Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, which I'm very excited to listen to. And if you guys have already listened to it, tell me how you feel about it. Um, just don't spoil anything for me. Just say like what it's like and like, you know, how you feel about it. So yeah, that is basically my entire tea about the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, I'm just excited about the artists this year with 2024. We have so many artists um, that have been and are trying to release albums uh, this year. Like, we have Beyonce in March, which I'm very excited to listen to. I will most likely do an album reaction of Beyonce. Um, we have Taeyong's album coming very soon, which, oh my god, get ready for an album synopsis, people. It's going to be crazy. Um, we have Dua Lipa. We have Charlie XCX. Uh, we have Lana in September with Lasso. We have Taylor Swift with the Tortured Poets Department in April. 
We have Conan Gray, a uh, lonely dancer in April. Like there is so many artists that I thoroughly love that are releasing albums this year and I'm so excited about it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything you'd like me to discuss with music drama, um, feel free to tell me that as well. Um, either way, let's just have a good discussion in the comments. Let's all talk about the Super Bowl. Let's all talk about different stuff that I discussed today. And uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye. <laughs> Don't be afraid.